Hey everybody, it's Larry Berman here. Guess what? There's going to be a solar eclipse in North America. It's actually going to be at 312 uh, in the afternoon, right while I'm doing Berman's call. And this week on the show, we're going to feature solar stocks. So I'm all ready for the uh, eclipse and I'm not going to be able to see it. And so let's have a look at the market and what blinded us with science this week. So we heard from Jay Powell. We, we heard from a gaggle of Fed speakers and the doves be doves, the hawks be hawks. The policy committee is split. It's clear, you know, 10 thinking three cuts, um, nine thinking two market pricing. Um, after non-farm payrolls on Friday, uh, keep pushing it back, pushing it back. So 50-50 chance of a June cut right now, not fully priced for July and, you know, a little more than certainty of a, a cut in rates by uh, September. Now, this week we get inflation numbers and a lot of Wall Street narrative coming out after the employment report on Friday morning was that these are Goldilocks numbers. We're firing on all cylinders. We're adding jobs. Americans are working. The private sector is strong. And from an unemployment rate, we're full employment. Average hourly earnings are coming down. The inflation pressures are ebbing. Beautiful. And so stocks ripped higher because, again, earnings in Q1, probably going to be pretty good. And so we're coming up to earnings season now again. And so that's all great. When we turn the lens to Canada, we say, oops, what is the leadership in Canada not doing? We actually lost jobs in Canada this month. So the Canadian market and economy is a very, very different beast than the U.S. market. You know, so so thinking about it, is this going to be the perfect outcome? And I continue to believe, and I'm in the minority clearly at the moment, that the biggest tightening cycle in history at the fastest pace will end in a hard landing. What is different in Canada than the U.S. is that the higher rates are having far more of an impact on Canadian employment and the Canadian household budget than they are in the U.S. The re global reshoring and rebalancing is impacting the U.S. significantly stronger from a net jobs creation, from a economic momentum standpoint, than it is in Canada. And those two things distinguish it, presenting the likelihood that the Bank of Canada is going to start cutting rates well before the Federal Reserve does. When we look at market response this week and we see this risk off, fall off a cliff, you know, what were the news headlines here? As best as we could tell, it wasn't Neil Kashkari uh, saying, you know, possibly the Fed won't cut this year. It was more likely the headlines coming off of the Biden administration after his call with uh, Netanyahu suggesting that if Israel didn't make a, a, some, some really hard decisions right here, that the U.S. would have to think their support for Israel. Now, I think that's all political nonsense. No way, no how, no shape would the US ever back away from supporting the only democracy in the Middle East. So that's not gonna happen, but wow, did the market take that as being risk off. At the same time, the CIA is saying, Israel's gonna be attacked within 24 hours. Now, by the time you're seeing this, it's gonna be well through the Israeli Sabbath. And like we saw on October 7th, if there's going to be an attack, I would bet highly it's already happened and it's been done on the Jewish Sabbath. So we'll see. You know, I get that it's Ramadan now. I get that the Israelis weren't 
very accommodative in in that respect um and i'm not saying that that's right or wrong but i'm saying that if this is a real threat attack you can bet those u.s aircraft carriers are going to provide air support for israel and if not the middle east goes absolutely ballistic when we look at oil prices brent back above 90 like you're seeing all these things everything commodity related inflation related all these things are kind of pointing to it yes the u.s equity market is just absolutely priced for perfection and why because we're at full employment and earnings are still going to be there so that's really the big dynamic when we think about risk off and we think about the bond market you know u.s bond market had a tough week this little up move here in the long bond we're looking at tlt here was the opposite reaction to equities falling off a cliff on Thursday afternoon. But as non-farm payrolls came in strong, bonds sold off again. Again, inflation numbers this week, the quarterly refunding announcement on May 1st and the composition of how they are going to need to finance the next tranche of debt and deficit and, and unwinding of QT is going to likely define from a bond market yield perspective. So this is the U.S. 10-year. You cannot any way, anyhow, any shape say that the U.S. bond market is not in a massive bear market. Where it ends, from a trend perspective, from a chart school technical perspective, you know, you've got these trend channels we can draw. I get we I've cut through some levels here. Forget about that. But we've got this trend of rising rates and a trend is a pattern of higher highs and higher lows, whatever perspective, whatever time frame you're looking for. And it's pretty clear since interest rates troughed in the covid collapse that we've seen nothing but higher highs and higher lows and higher highs and higher lows. So the next question is what happens under all the massive treasury supply relative to the hard landing? If the hard landing isn't coming now, the recession, and we continue to see good employment numbers and it's wonderful and rosy, then we can expect at a very minimum, we're gonna test 5% again so are we going to a higher high here under the weight of supply and strong economic performance, even though inflation is moderating? But what if all these commodity prices shooting up, including gold and everything else, is telling us inflation is going to be something we need to worry about? The bond market is just an ugly, ugly thing. So finishing off here on our charts, gold. I've been asked recently uh, about a projection on gold. You know, we had this multi-year base. And when we broke out from that, from the bottom, gold prices doubled. If gold prices double here, you know, 32, 3300 on gold, probably not. The size of this base and the magnitude of this base, the duration of this base relative to this base, probably not a double from here. But the simple technical measurement is, you know, how big is this base? Project that base onto the projection. And it's ballpark $400 to $500. And you put that on 21, 2050 and you project that out and you project the time and you say by some time around the U.S. election or sooner, and it clearly might be sooner, um, you know, we're 2,500 plus on gold uh, before trend resistance comes in. There's all kinds of way of measuring where these are going to stop. I'll tell you where it might stop is when Chinese uh, central bank starts to buy more treasuries than they are gold. At the moment, the biggest buyer of gold in the last six months to a year has been the Chinese central bank. Ask yourself the question, why is Janet Yellen, for the second time within a year, gone to mainland China? 
I think it's to beg them to keep buying treasuries because who's going to buy them? They know they got a monster, a wall of supply coming. And if the economy is, is strong, this is just not bullish for bonds. So anyways, we're pretty hedged at the moment. We're looking to get a little bit longer into rising yields um, and, and remain at this point bearish on bonds. Again, when there's some term premium, when we're paid adequately to take interest rate risk, it will make sense to do so. The more robust economy is, the Fed needs to stay higher for longer, the harder the ultimate landing will be. Anyways, not exciting news this week, but, but that probably means equity markets hold in reasonably well and corrections are going to be relatively shallow, despite the significant overvaluation that we now see. It's very unlikely in my mind that earnings growth catches up to valuation. So at some point, we're going to get a correction in equities. That correction might be in time sideways in a consolidation where we still stay strong. But when that hard landing comes and earnings don't rise but fall, that's when equity markets have the greatest risk. That risk keeps getting pushed out. Have a great week, everyone.